everybody, it's Dr. Joe, and today I'm going to show you some stretches for shoulder tendonitis. If you're looking for some exercises, make sure you click the link up here. So since shoulder tendonitis is a very general term, I'm going to show you some general stretches. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert! Disclaimer alert! So the first stretch or slash exercises, it's a little combination of both, are going to be your pendulum exercises. Pendulums are my favorite because it really helps open up that shoulder, it loosens up those muscles and those tendons, and it really just kind of works it out. So if you have a lot of pain in the shoulder, I always say start off with the pendulums because that's going to help loosen everything up. I'm going to show you first without a weight, and then if you don't have any precautions or contraindications of your shoulder, then I'm going to show you how to do it with a weight because the weight kind of just helps open up that joint just a little bit more. So use a chair or a countertop, something sturdy that you can hold on to because you're going to lean over a little bit. So, um, make sure that you're getting in a good position, and if it's really hurting, try not to actively move your shoulder. You're going to use your body to move your shoulder, but again, if you don't have any precautions or contraindications or like surgery type stuff, you can move your arm a little bit, but it really makes it more relaxed if you can just move your body to make your arm move. So hold on with the good side, and then the side that you want to work or the one that's hurt, just let it hang straight down. Get your body in a nice comfortable position, feet spread out, and what you're going to do is try and make a circle with your arm, but use your body to do it. So the arm should really just hang there and re relax, and then you're moving your whole body to make that arm move. So again, just having it pretty relaxed. So it doesn't have to be big circles. You're really just trying to get that movement in there. It's hanging down, opening up that joint, and getting those muscles to relax. So you want to do about 10 one way and then reverse it and do 10 the other way. So um, even though I don't have problems with this shoulder right now, probably will later, um, it feels really good even with a good shoulder, just hanging down, loosening it up a little bit. So if you have an injury or some irritation going on, this is a really good way to get some of that out of there. The next one is just going to be a side to side movement. So you're going to kind of stay in the same position and this time just sway side to side to let that arm swing back and forth. So again, you see it doesn't have to be big movements. You don't have to have your arm swinging like this, but just going back and forth to really get it nice and loosened up. And then the last one is a front to back movement. So put the foot forward on the opposite side so you have room to swing a little bit. And again, just let it hang down and then lean front to back to have that arm just kind of swing back and forth. So again, that's just a nice way to kind of loosen it up and let everything hang and relax, especially if those muscles are tight and kind of spasmed out a little bit. So if you try those, those feel really good, don't have any problems with them, then you can take a little weight to add on. This is just a soup vegetable can, it's about one pound, you don't really need a whole lot more than that, but just enough to get some weight on there to open up that joint a little bit more. So you're just going to do all the same movements. Um, with the weight, you can, again, actively move your shoulder a little bit, but you really want the body to do most of the work. So hanging it down, swinging it around in those circles, 10 one way, reverse it, 10 the other way, then you can do the side to side motion, really just letting it hang and loosen up, and then putting that opposite foot forward, and then just kind of swinging back and forth. Another great way to stretch out your shoulder is to use a wall and do wall slides. So wall slides are great because the wall kind of helps support your arm. So it's not just lifting it up and you having to use all your muscles. The wall kind of helps support it so you don't have to do all the work. The wall helps you do the work. So what you want to do is make sure that, again, your thumb is in an outward position. Some people slide it like this, which is okay, but again, that puts your shoulder in a little bit of an impinged position. So with the thumb out, that's better. You might have to start a little bit lower if, if your shoulder is really bothering you, but just let that wall support your arm and just slide it up as far as you comfortably can. Hold it for about three to five seconds once you get it into a nice big stretch, come back down, 
do that about 10 times. If you can go a little bit here and that not quite all the way up, then you can try leaning forward a little bit and that'll give it a little bit more of a stretch as well. What's also great with the wall is then you can turn your body a little bit. So this would be the flexion position. If I turn just a little bit, now I'm doing that scaption position going up and down. And if, then if I turn all the way out, then I'm doing that abduction. So it's a great way to get the stretch in all of those directions and using the wall to support it a little bit. Some people like to do what we call finger walking, where you're just taking your fingers and climbing up the wall. Um, some of my patients have found that that's more comfortable, comfortable for them than sliding. So you can try both ways and see what works best for you. Now we're gonna do a chest stretch. I like chest stretches in the corner because it does a really good job of giving you stretches in all different directions to get that, those pegs and just help open up the chest and really stretch the shoulder as well. So get a, get a corner that's got a lot of space, doesn't have a lot of clutter in it. And what you're going to do is just put one foot kind of in towards the corner. It doesn't matter which foot it is. And then you're going to put one hand on each side. If your shoulder's really sore, you might have to start down low. But once you go higher, you're stretching the chest just a little bit differently. So I always kind of suggest to people, start off low, do one stretch for 30 seconds, then the next one go a little bit higher, then the next one go a little bit higher if you can. Because some people like it here a little bit better, and some people like it up here a little bit better. They get stretched a little bit differently, and it's really just personal preference. So putting the foot in the corner, hand on each side of the corner, and then just lean into that corner, holding it for 30 seconds. After that, if you can comfortably with your hands, slide them up just a little bit, stretch in, hold that for 30 seconds. And then for the third one, if you can go even higher, then see how my elbows get a little bit straighter and it's just a different stretch on the chest. So try all those directions and see which one works best for you. So the next stretch is, uh, we call this passive range of motion, active assisted range of motion. I like it as a stretch because it really helps kind of get movement in that shoulder. You can use, this is just a PVC pipe. You can use a broomstick. If you have a cane, you can use a cane, but you just want something that's kind of like a stick that will help assist the arm to go up. So you don't have to actively take it up, which might still hurt with that tendonitis, but you can use something to take it up so it doesn't have to do all the work, but you're still stretching it into a position that it might not be able to go to on its own yet. So what you wanna do is the, the stick and the good side is doing all the work. So if my left side is the one that's injured, my right side is really gonna be moving the stick and the other side's just gonna go for a ride. If you have something that has a hook like a cane or if you just make it with a PVC pipe, I like having the thumb in an upwards position like this because that opens up that shoulder, that doesn't impinge it as much or put as much pressure on it. But if you just have a regular stick, holding it this way is okay. But again, I prefer this way with the thumb up because that really just is gonna make it more comfortable and you probably can push it a little bit further. But again, it's just hanging on going for the ride. So it's not really moving, it might, you, it might help a little bit, but the goal is to get the stick to do all the movement. And so then you're just gonna kind of bring it up this way, far as you comfortably can. If you can only bring it to here, that's fine. And then come back down. So just a little pause while you're there, maybe three seconds or so. You don't have to hold it for that 30 seconds. This is really just trying to push that range of motion a little bit. So bringing it up with that other arm, this one's just kind of going for the ride and then start off with about 10 to 15 of those. And then the next one is gonna be abduction, going out to the side. Again, the thumb placement is a little bit important because it's gonna open up that shoulder, but if you are uncomfortable doing it that way, you can hold it this way, but I don't like that because that kind of impinges the shoulder a little bit. If you have just a straight stick, hold it where the thumb is going outwards like this. So this time, you're just gonna push it out this way. If you have that little hook, again, you can hold it kind of like this and just let it go upwards like that. That is a little bit easier for people because then you're just kind of really pushing it up. You don't even have to hold on. But if you have the thumb in that outwards position going this way, when the thumb eventually comes upwards, that's going to be that open position. So really just, you know, pulling, pushing it as far as you comfortably can. 
you can go up higher that's great if you can't this abduction movement is a little tough on the shoulder so you might only be able to get to right here and again then just hold it for about three maybe even five seconds in that position and then come back down and then the last one I'm going to show you with the, the stick is doing external rotation and so the external rotation is taking it out this way and so you want to keep your elbow by your side if you feel like you're pushing and your elbows coming out roll up a little towel squeeze it in there so you know if the towel drops then your elbow is coming out and so sometimes that helps keep that elbow nice and close to your side same thing if you have that hook hold it this way where the thumb is in the upward position if you don't you can do it this way it just might be a little bit tighter on the shoulder so um, if it's just the pointy side like this you can do it this way um, going out because it's kind of sitting in this position and it doesn't have to hold it up this way so you can do it this way even if you don't have that little um, hook here but I really like that so keeping the elbow as close to your side as you can thumb in that upwards position and then you're just using that other side to push out as far as you comfortably can and again this is a lot of motion um, this is normal motion so you might only be able to get to here that's okay when I had my shoulder surgery and I was working on it I started out and I was just getting here but eventually I was able to stretch it out a little bit more and pausing a little bit at that in motion coming back in stretching the shoulder out is sometimes a little painful so don't push through the pain you want stretches to always be that good hurt so it's you know it, it kind of has a hurty feeling but it's a stretchy feeling it's not just pain so the the stretch that i'm going to show you is for the internal rotation of the shoulder and that's when you're taking your hand back behind you if you've got to itch your back or if you're washing your back or for the ladies if you're trying to clasp a bra so this is a pretty important movement and when you have tendonitis in the shoulder it's one of those that is the first thing you lose and the last thing to come back so an easy way to stretch that out is just take like a belt or a strap um, something tight you can use a dog leash if you want to but you want it to be firm so you don't want it to be a resistive band because then that's going to give a little bit and with the stretch you really want it to be something tight that doesn't give so if you're stretching your left hand you want to hold it in your right hand and just kind of put it behind you like this so it's hanging down and you can grab onto it now if your shoulder hurts you might have to grab down here you might not be able to grab it up here yet and that's okay you just grab it wherever you can and then use the other hand just to pull upwards taking that that arm up as far as you can your hand up as far as you can on your back and this one since it's a stretch you're going to try and hold it for 30 seconds so you don't want to go so high where you're just uncomfortable and in pain the whole time because you have to hold it for that 30 seconds so really make sure that you're just going till it's tight but tolerable hold it for 30 seconds relax it give it a little break and do that three times so those were your stretches for shoulder tendonitis remember if you want some exercises make sure you click on the link and don't forget to support our channel by clicking here and don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here and remember be safe have fun and i hope you feel better soon